Hello, this is Dr. João Flávio Nogueira from Brazil, and I will post a series of two dissections, one endoscopic, which is this one, and another one that I strongly recommend you to see, which is microscopic. So endoscopic and microscopic dissec dissections. Uh, the endoscopic dissection will focus uh, on the middle ear and also uh, in the inner ear. And uh, the microscopic dissection is a very complete dissection uh, showing different types of approaches, uh, including uh, approaches, uh, retrofacial approaches and other approaches. So the first step of our endoscopic dissection, and I'm using a 30 degree, uh, 3 millimeter, uh, 14 centimeter length endoscope, 3 millimeter in diameter and 30 degree, the angulation, is to raise the tympanomatal flap. So once we raise the tympanomatal flap, uh, this is a cadaver, of course, it will not bleed. During the surgery, this is probably the most difficult step of the procedure because it's the uh, uh, surgical time that it bleeds. So as you can see, probably there is a temporal bone fracture in this uh, specimen. Uh, and we'll see the annulus, the tympanic annulus at the pars tensa of the tympanic membrane. And then we elevate this annulus uh, from its canal to show the mucosa of the middle ear, to show the middle ear mucosa that we can enter and then to enter the middle ear space. So uh, you use a round knife uh, or also an elevator. Uh, nowadays, there are instruments that you can use suction with it. So a suction elevator uh, can be used over there. But uh, if you if you use a combination of a good hemostasis, good anesthesia, and uh, adrenaline so cotinoids, probably you won't need those types of instruments, those suction instruments. So we elevate the, the, the annulus uh, among with the tympanic membrane, and uh, we expose the posterior malleolar crest. The posterior malleolar crest is very important because it's the home of the posterior malleolar ligament which is this one that we are cutting over there. And the posterior malleolar ligament makes like an X with the corda, with the corda tympani nerve. And then we can elevate better and expose better the long process of the intus. So now we see the corda tympani, the malleus over there, the long process of the incus, the stapes. We already see the round window niche. Uh, and we elevate the tympanic membrane until we see the prusac uh, space opening, the Prusak space entering, which is over there. Now, with an alligator forceps, we can pull this uh, tympanic, uh, tympanomatal flap and expose uh, the malleus. So there is a very nice uh, surgical plane, dissection plane, actually, uh, if you find the malleus cap, uh, and then if you dissect the malleus from uh, uh, the tympanomatal flap from the malleus, uh, you can use uh, instruments, straight instruments, uh, to uh, elevate this flap from the malleus. So it, uh, because there is this surgical plane, it's very uh, easy to do this. At the ambus, the position of the ambus is a little bit more complicated because at the ambus, uh, the, the layers of the tympanic membrane, they, they fuse themselves and then uh, there is a very uh, sticky uh, point of the tympanic membrane at the ambus. So you, you can cut over there to try to expose the tympanic uh, cavity, the middle ear cavity, uh, as uh, big as you want or as you like. So we elevated this tympanomatal flap, and then we position this tympanomatal flap more anteriorly, and then we can see already the protympanic space more anteriorly with the eustachian tube opening. Uh, this is the hypotympanic air cells over there. Uh, we can see here the posterior malleolar spine, uh, which was the home of the posterior malleolar ligament. And then this is the anterior malleolar spine, which is the home of the anterior malleolar ligament. Uh, this is the tensile fold over there. This is the cochlear form process. This is facial nerve. Uh, this is uh, the stapedius tendon, long process of the incus. Uh, and we can see the anatomy in a very close way, the middle ear anatomy, using uh, these endoscopes. Uh, nowadays, endoscopic ear surgery has become very popular, especially uh, to treat middle ear pathologists. Uh, so 
the anatomy, the middle ear anatomy, when you study the anatomy with the endoscopes, is a very nice uh, anatomy to, to see because the endoscopes provide this better view uh, of the middle ear when compared to other instruments. So uh, we are now going to curate a little bit uh, to expose a little bit better the uh, long process of the Incas and to expose a little bit better the facial nerve. So uh, we pick up a good curette. The, the, the key here of the successful uh, curettage is to have a very sharp and good uh, curette. So you can use the borders of the uh, curette uh, to remove the bone. As you see, we do not need to remove a lot of bone because when you remove uh, small pieces of bone, since you have wide angle view because of the endoscopes, you can already see a lot of, of the space uh, a lot of the anatomy that you want to see in the middle ear. So we are here elevating, uh, removing this bone, trying to preserve the corda tympani nerve, uh, and then uh, trying to remove as much bone as we can in order to see uh, better the, the middle ear, especially the retrotympanic space. The retrotympanic space is a very important segment of the middle ear anatomy and actually it's one of the most uh, important spots when we talk about cholesteatoma to talk about uh, residual disease or recurrent disease. This uh, uh, retrotympanic space and also the anterior space. So now we created, we can see the lateral semicircular canal there. We can see the facial nerve in a more pink way, more inferior. Uh, we can see the long process of the incus. We can see here the monticulus already uh, that goes from the promontory to the superpyramidal space. I'm adjusting the focus over there. And we can see uh, the space, the first space, which is called the sinus tympani. The sinus tympani is the space between the ponticulus and the subiculum. The subiculum is there, over there, from the posterior pillar to the uh, st uh, steloid preeminence over there. So this is the subiculum. So the space between, and this is the funiculus, from the anterior pillar to the uh, jugular bulb. This is probably, uh, one space, uh, the, infra, the infracochlear canaliculus, that when the uh, petrous apex is pneumatized in some patients, uh, the, the, inferior, the subcochlear canaliculus is open, is, is patent. So now we're going to cut the corda here uh, to expose better. And then we can see the facial nerve, the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. We can see the incudustapedial joint. We are going to disarticulate the, the incus from the stapes and from the malleus, uh, and then uh, we also are going to remove the malleus here uh, to expose better uh, what we call the the tympanic diaphragm and the tympanic isthmus. So we are going to remove the anterior malleolar ligament. The anterior malleolar ligament is very is is more tough than the posterior malleolar ligament. The posterior is very thin; it's very easy to cut. The anterior malleolar ligament it's it's sometimes very thick. Uh, and it supports uh, the malleus in a better way than the posterior malleolar ligament. So sometimes it's difficult to cut. We are cutting, removing the malleus, uh, removing the incus also, and uh, keeping the stapes at this point of the dissection. We are going to keep the stapes, and we are going to remove now the, the malleus. Uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's a little bit more tricky, because in this case I forgot to cut the the the, tympa, the tendon over there the malleus tendon over there so we are going to remove the malleus and then after we are going to remove the incus and then we see the short process and the long process of the incus and then now we have a very good view of the aptympanic diaphragm in this dissection i use the piezo device the piezo device is a kind of ultrasonic uh, a bone a curette to remove the bone uh, without damaging the soft tissues uh, using uh, ultras ultrasound and, and frequencies, high frequencies. Uh, and then uh, it uses a lot of water also to irrigate. So it's good because it cleans the field for you. So after uh, doing a bigger articotomy using the piezo, we can see here a lot of the anatomy. We see here uh, the canal of the muscle, the tensor tympani muscle. Here is the region of the protympanum and the proteniculus and the carotid and then the stapes and then the round window niche 
and then the facial nerve over there, the lateral canal. Uh, this is uh, already mastoid air cells. These are mastoid air cells. We see the adus adantrum, and we see already the antrum. This is a 30 degree endoscope, and we see the antrum of the mastoid um, in a good way. Also, we can see the cog over there, uh, right over the cochlearform process, and also the geniculate ganglia over there, over the uh, cochlearform process. In this case here, since the objective is to go to the inner ear, we are going to remove the stapes and open the vestibule. We are opening the vestibule from the middle ear, from the side of the middle ear. Uh, in the microscopic dissection, the vestibule uh, will be opened uh, by the mastoid uh, region, the, 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 through a transmastoid approach. So uh, this is a transcanal approach, and we are removing the stapes and exposing the vestibule. Once you expose the vestibule, you can already see uh, a small membrane, uh, like a white membrane. Uh, this is the utricle. Uh, so it's very, very interesting to, to understand uh, the utricle, which goes behind the facial nerve, which goes behind uh, the facial nerve. And then we open the vestibule. And inside the vestibule, you can see sometimes the autoconias, the small, very small white dots that are the autoconias, and also the neural epithelium of the vestibule, which has like some small black dots over there. We see Jacobson nerve. And now with the curette, we are enlarging the vestibule to expose better the vestibule and to expose uh, the vestibular crest and the elliptical recess and the uh, uh, round recess, the oval recess which are the attachments of the inferior and the, post and the superior vestibular nerves. So we already opened a little bit the cochlea also, and we can see here uh, the membrane, a little bit of the membrane of the round window, the round window membrane, and uh, here over there. And see, we open the cochlea, we have scala tympani and scala vestibula. Scala vestibula goes to the vestibule, of course, and scala tympani goes to the middle ear cavity. Uh, so we have scala tympani, Scala vestibular, this is the vestibule, and this is the elliptical recess and the spherical recess. The elliptical recess is in the superior part, superior anterior, and the spherical recess is the in the in the at the posterior inferior part. So we see the scala tympani, the, the membrane of the uh, round window, uh, and we see the, the scala media, of course, with the organ of corti inside. We cannot see the organ of cor corti. Uh, because you would need a lot of more magnification. So we see the fustis, and see, the fustis is like the floor of the scala tympani. So it's a very reliable and important landmark for cochlear implantation, because uh, if you want to put your, your electrode at the scala tympani, you follow the fustis, because the fustis is actually the floor of the scala tympani. So uh, sometimes when you have malformations, you follow the fustis, and then you are at the scala tympani. And see here, we have the vestibule, the utricle over there, this white uh, membrane over there behind the facial nerve, and then uh, ellipt spherical, elliptical recess and spherical recess. And between those two, you see the vestibular crest, which is the thing that divides the two vestibular nerves, the superior vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve. So the vestibular crest is over there. And then if you angulate a little bit more uh, for, to the right, the endoscope, this is actually... Uh, uh, we can see uh, the entrance of the posterior semicircular canal. So we can angulate a little bit better, and then we see over there the entrance of the posterior semicircular canal. Can you see? It's a very nice, a very nice landmark that also we can see here. I'm adjusting the focus here, uh, and we can see over there. And we can see the attachments of the nerves the superior vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve. And here we can see scala media in a very close way and the neuroepithelium that we have uh, at the vestibular. You see those black dots over there? This is the neuroepithelium epithelium that we have uh, at this uh, anatomical part. So scala media, the organ of corti is inside this scala media and it actually has the hairy cells, the inner hairy cells, the... Uh, external hairy cells, and these cells, when they are depolarized, they produce uh, electrical uh, impulse that goes all the way to the cochlear nerve and goes to the brain, and then we, we hear. So now we are going to open the cochlea. Sometimes this happens 
when you, we are drilling, this is a very small a burr, a diamond burr, uh, and sometimes uh, the tympano metal flap gets stuck at the burr. But we are opening here, trying to open with this burr uh, to expose uh, the, the apical uh, parts of the cochlea. So this is the basal turn of the cochlea, which is already open. And we are going to try to open the apical turns of the cochlea. The apical turns of the cochlea are the more most protected ones. So the the sounds, the bass sounds, the, the, the sounds with low frequency, they are captured over there. That's why they are the last sounds that we uh, he, we lose uh, when we have, for instance, uh, uh, age-related hear problems, uh, hearing problems. Uh, the most acute sounds. They are captured at the mo most uh, basal parts of the cochlea. So that's why these parts are not as protected as the superior uh, parts, the apical parts of the cochlea. So that's why uh, most of the times when we age, we lose uh, first the acute sounds, the sounds uh, with more high frequencies, uh, because they are captured at this more basal part of the cochlea. So. Now we are using the curette to try to open this, these uh, more apical parts of the cochlea, more protected parts of the cochlea. This is the op optic capsule, which is a very hard bone, uh, one of the most hard bones in our body. Uh, uh, and then we are trying to open uh, this uh, cochlea to expose what I call the Christmas tree because it, it looks like a Christmas tree when you see the modilus and when you see uh, the cochlea when it's already open. So the vestibule is already open uh, using this transcanal uh, way. And now we are opening the cochlea to expose better the modilus of the cochlea. And also we are going to look for the cochlear nerve. So we are using the curette at this point, but I'm going to use the piezo because it uh, preserves the soft tissues better than the curette, of course, and better than the drill, of course. So we open here this more uh, apical turn of the cochlea, and we see scala tympani, scala vestibuli, uh, and we see the scala media. See? It's a very beautiful view, I think. The vestibule is already open. We see the attachments of the superior vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve, and also uh, we can use uh, other types of instruments to open better this bone, to expose better this bone uh, for us uh, to see the anatomy of the inner ear. So this is a very important step. You see the vestibule, you see the apical turn of the cochlea, you see cochlear form process. So where do I enter into the inner ear? So the space between the vestibule and uh, the cochleariform process, this triangle and the modulus, this more apical turn, is the space that we can use to enter the inner ear. So uh, I space in this triangle uh, between the cochleariform process, this most apical turn of the cochlea, and the vestibule, it's very interesting to enter uh, the inner ear. So we see the cochleariform process, we see uh, the canal, the tensor tympani canal, we see the geniculate ganglia over there, a little bit superior from the cochlear form process. And then we can go inside into the inner ear. Uh, before going inside, we are going to expose a little bit better the geniculate ganglia. So we open, we elevate the muscle the, from its canal, the tensor tympani muscle from its canal. We can elevate over there. And then once we elevate, we expose better the geniculate, the geniculate ganglia we can elevate in a better way. Also, we can remove the canal of the facial nerve, uh, the bony canal of the facial nerve in this case. Uh, this is not uh, supposed to be a surgical demonstration. It's just a dissection. So you cannot do this in surgery, of course, or do a decompression of the facial nerve in the middle ear. I, I think it's not recommended. Uh, and then um, an endoscopic, I mean, transcanal endoscopic decompression of the facial nerve at the middle ear. And then you can elevate the muscle uh, using the posterior part of the curette and then you're going to expose, we are going to expose the geniculate and also the great petrosal superficial nerve. The dura, the middle fossa dura, we can already see the middle fossa dura 
uh, in a bit uh, in the tagment here, but it descends towards the eustachian tube. So this is one of the regions where, where the dura, the middle fossa dura, is very close to the middle ear, very, very close, and sometimes very easy to enter. So we are going to remove uh, this bone to expose, see, we are now exposing uh, the geniculate ganglion and also the great petrosal superficial nerve going in the direction of the eustachian tube, following the muscle, following the tensor tympani muscle. So we expose the geniculate, which is a little bit more anterior than the cochlear form process, and then we can elevate the facial from its canal, the tympanic segment of the facial from its canal, and see the great petrosal superficial nerve over there going in anterior uh, to the direction of the eustachian tube and to the direction uh, following the muscle, uh, the tensor tympani muscle. So we are removing this bone here of the facial canal, the tympanic segment of the facial nerve, uh, which is a very nice segment of the facial nerve. Facial nerve has the labyrinthine segment, which is the most, um, I would say, weak segment of the facial nerve, and then has the geniculate ganglion, and then you have the tympanic segment, which is this one, and then you have second genital, and then you have the mastoid segment of the facial nerve. So we are elevating the facial nerve from its canal, from the tympanic uh, canal here, uh, and then we can see the entrance of the facial nerve into the inner ear, and see the great petrosal superficial nerve uh, following the muscle, following the muscle going in the direction of the station tube. So now, probably we are going to see and we're going to enter the inner ear to see how this is, these are the attachments of the vestibular nerves the superior inferior and then this is the part that we can go inside to go to the inner ear so in that triangle that we can create from the cochlear front process the vestibule and uh, the mo the most apical turn of the cochlea we can go inside and dissect and go into the inner ear this is a very uh, important move if there was a live patient over there, once you open this, a CSF leak starts to come out uh, from uh, the inner ear, from the, the central nervous system. So we are using the piezo, trying to preserve this, uh, these nerves, trying to preserve the soft tissue, of course, and removing the bone. And as you can see, it's an underwater dissection uh, that the piezo allows us to make. So uh, using the piezo, we can go inside and go to the inner ear to remove the bone and expose better the modilus, uh, the region that I call the Christmas tree, because for me it reminds like a Christmas tree, and also uh, the region of the cochlear nerve, the inner ear and the region of the cochlear nerve. So we are now uh, removing the, 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 the water from the piezo, the saline solution from the piezo, and we can see uh, the region of the cochlea, and also we can see the region of the cochlear nerve. The cochlear nerve is a very uh, thick nerve when compared to, to the other nerves of, of, to the other three nerves of the, the complex, of the vestibular cochlear complex. So you see the cochlear nerve over there, in a very good way. And here you have the attachments of the superior and inferior vestibular nerves. So uh, we see the cochlear nerve, and over there we can already see some nerves and the attachment of the superior and the inferior vestibular nerves over there. The elliptical recess and the spherical recess uh, separated uh, between uh, those two, separated with the vestibular crest. So uh, we see here the modulus of the cochlea. We see here the cochlear nerve over there. Uh, and then we can go more inside to expose better the region of the facial nerve. It's very important to also locate the facial nerve once you are doing these types of procedures. So uh, the modulus is there. We can see scala tympani, uh, scala vestibular. We can see the cochlear nerve. Uh, and we can dissect inside the inner ear to expose better this region and then to expose the facial nerve and to try to see the vestibular nerves. The vestibular nerves, uh, they are very difficult to see sometimes because they are very small and once you open, Sometimes you already uh, remove parts of it, of the superior vestibular nerves. So here, it's uh, the most important nerves to try to locate are the cochlear nerve, which is easy because it's the thicker one, and also the cochlear, uh, the, the, the facial nerve, because it's uh, nice to see the facial nerve. So we are using the piezo once again, 
trying to remove the bone, uh, it's a very small dissection. And here we can already see parts of the facial nerve uh, going up into the, the, the region of the geniculate ganglion, and then we can see a little bit of the parts of the vestibular nerves. So this is the modulus over there, uh, the region that I call the Christmas tree. Uh, this is the cochlear nerve over there, we can see. And here we see the vestibular nerves, probably, and the facial nerve over there. The facial nerve and the vestibular nerves down there. Facial nerve, as you recall, is anterior superior. Cochlear nerve is anterior inferior. Superior vestibular nerve is uh, superior and posterior. And posterior vestibular nerve is posterior and inferior. Uh, when we study the inner ear. So this is the facial nerve that we are picking up and posterior to the facial nerve we see the anterior the superior vestibular nerve so uh, we uh, can use uh, these uh, instruments to remove the saline solution and then we see the facial nerve the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve and also the vestibular nerves in a complex like uh, that uh, posterior to the facial nerve so facial nerve over there and these are the vestibular nerves, probably, that we are cutting over there. And the facial nerve is there. Facial nerve is there. And the cochlear nerve is there. So we see cochlear nerve and you see facial nerve in a very good way. And then we can dissect the facial nerve all the way to the geniculate ganglion. Uh, it's a very hard bone, but this can be done. And using the piezo, it facilitates a lot uh, to do this dissection. Uh, to expose better the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve. So we are removing here, or sectioning here the, the saline solution just to create a better view, a good view of the Christmas tree that I call. Uh, and then we are going to try to remove this bone in order to expose better the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve. So once again, we see these are the vestibular nerves over there, the superior and inferior. Uh, that we are removing uh, from the facial nerve. We are trying to dissect from the facial nerve and from the cochlear nerve over there, of course. And this is the vestibular crest that we are trying to remove. Uh, and then we put the vestibular nerves down over there, and then we see better the cochlear nerve and then the facial nerve. See? Cochlear nerve is over there, and facial nerve is over there. And this is the inner ear. And if we put the endoscope all over there, we, we, we go to the brainstem. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to do this, you have to create a bigger approach, uh, destroy completely the cochlear, uh, uh, extended transotic approach, and go over there. But now, we, we want to study the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve. So, I think it's very important to understand the position of the facial nerve when you open the cochlea. This is a surgical demonstration, not a surgical demonstration, I mean, this is a, a, an anatomic demonstration just for us to understand the position of the nerves when you go in a transcanal way because it's interesting the anatomy is the same the same anatomy but you have different types of view you have the macroscopic anatomy you have the microscopic anatomy and you have the endoscopic anatomy and also the endoscopic anatomy in a transcanal way the microscopic anatomy in a transmastoid way so it's the same structures these are the same structures but with different types of views so it's important for us to understand this and to create in our heads uh, these types of views to understand the position even if you want to do uh, a trans labyrinthine approach or even if you want to do a uh, retro sigmoid approach or even if you want to do a myra approach uh, it's important to understand this this anatomy and to see uh, the different views that we can have from this anatomy to the other types of anatomy. The same structures, of course, by the way. So, facial nerve, we already remove a little bit of the bone over there, and we can see the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve. See the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve over there, and then uh, we can see uh, the, 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 the position of the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve all the way to the geniculate ganglion. So, once again, we see the Christmas tree, we see the facial nerve, labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve. We see the vestibular nerves over there that I put down. Uh, and you see the great petrosal superficial nerve, the geniculate ganglion, 
it's a very nice way and we are dissecting more with the piezo it's important to go underwater see we we wait until the water fills the middle ear cavity and then we use the piezo to dissect better the piezo is good because it removes the bone but it doesn't mess most of the times with uh, soft tissue so it's good to do this kind of dissection using the piezo so once again we see the cochlear nerve we see the modulus uh, and then we see the facial nerve this is the tympanometal flap uh, and these are some bones that we can remove uh, that are, uh, bone chips that falls uh, when we use the piezo uh, and then we can see the anatomy once again of the inner ear so it's very nice and when we do the microscopic part of the demonstration which was performed by uh, professor miguel aristegui it's important to see uh, uh, the differences of views that we can have of course we are not going to go into this area we are uh, just going to open the cochlea but we are not going to expose the facial nerve the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve because we are not going to do a trans labyrinthine approach so these are the vestibular nerves facial nerve or oh, superior vestibular inferior vestibular over there facial superior vestibular over there facial nerve inferior vestibular uh, and then cochlear nerve over there so we can see the all four nerves uh, inside uh, the inner ear so it's a very nice anatomic dissection that was performed in Braga Portugal thanks to my friend Dr. Miguel Breda uh, from Portugal and we performed this dissection this demonstration dissection and now I added the movie and I'm doing this audio for you so I think it's very nice so thank you very much for your time for your for listening for this dissection and don't miss and don't uh, miss to watch the microscopic dissection that we are going to post also thank you very much